Welcome to Mabu Simple. What's up you guys, welcome back to day three here in Egypt. We got up incredibly early this morning. We were on the road by 4.30 a.m. to get out to a very epic site here in Egypt. And we have just arrived at the beautiful temples of Abu Simbel and we just got our first peek at them. There they are, no. <laughs> Let's go get a closer look. This is incredibly cool. <laughs> This site is mind-blowing, and what is even more mind-blowing is this whole site, these two temples were also relocated when they built the dam. You'll see this massive body of water out here to my right. This is Lake Nasser, the biggest man-made lake in the world. And it is right here at the foot of these temples, everybody. But what is amazing is that these temples used to be a little bit lower in the land here, but when they dammed the lakes, obviously they were gonna fill up, so they preemptively relocated these two temples, which is incredible. And I was asking our guide so what did they relocate just the statues or what but he said that they relocated the entire mountains they basically built some massive concrete domes to which they put the exterior rocks from the mountain and all the statues back onto it so what an incredible thing to do to relocate these precious ancient artifacts before they got buried by the big lake <laughs> These things are absolutely monstrous and I cannot believe they've been relocated to this position. We just got our bodyguards here. We're gonna go inside. <laughs> side chambers off the main entrance and they're cool. I love the way they've lit them up from the ground to light up all the hieroglyphics on the walls. Beautiful. So there are multiple chambers in this temple. The first chamber has eight massive statues lining the walkway up into the temple. And then we have an inner chamber and then we have this final chamber here where there's four statues, one of which is Ramses, the other three are different ancient gods. But there's this crazy phenomenon where twice a year the sun will shine through the front of the temple and shine all the way back through under the three statues on the right which is very symbolic because the one on the left is actually the god of darkness so he never gets illuminated during this phenomenon but even when they relocated this temple they arranged it in the same way so that the sun can still shine through twice a year during sunrise all the way through and illuminate those statues back there i think the craziest thing about this particular temple is that it was built and dedicated for ramses the second who was the pharaoh when moses was here in egypt like moses, moses guys like what? He's ancient. That tells you how ancient this is. And it's still here. It's unbelievable. Kind of a fun fact about these two temples is they were lost to history for a long time. Winds actually blew sands and covered them entirely. I don't know when. And it wasn't until 1817 that an Italian explorer actually discovered the baboons, which are right at the very top of that temple. I'm sure he had no idea what he was going to find as he dug down. But how exciting would that be to make a discovery like that? I'm sure that happens to very few people in this world. That's <laughs> <laughs> insanely cool. Okay, Daniel had his son in the king's temple. Now we're going in the queen's temple. <laughs> That's mine, guys. No, just kidding. This one's actually a lot smaller and not quite as <laughs> exciting, but still cool. Let's go. Yeah. here in Nefertiri's temple, Ramses' wife's temple, and the sun actually is shining right through the front door all the way back into the back chamber, shining on a statue right in the middle of it, and that's kind of cool. I don't know if there's any significance to that happening. Maybe it happens every day here in her temple, but that was kind of awesome. Here you can see all the cuts in the mountain. They basically cut it up into blocks from the base all the way to the top. Even the statues were cut horizontally. Everything numbered, everything relocated and put back together. 
together and I'd say they did a pretty dang good job. I don't know how they went about that whole process, but. Do you think you could do that puzzle? No. You're pretty good at puzzles. I could tell them this piece goes there, but actually like <laughs> moving them around, holy smokes. I could tell them smokes. this piece goes there. The head goes up on the top. <laughs> they must have been master Tetris players. Seriously, I don't know. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> All right guys, crossing the road. Confidently. <laughs> There's Crossing no the road here in Egypt, you guys, we've got the Sahara Desert right here. We're just taking a little pit stop oh. on our way back from Abu Simbel, and there is water everywhere. Nah. Just kidding. The mirages are like nothing we've ever seen before. This is insane. It looks like there's lakes out beyond there. And you can even see the reflection of like mountains yeah. and sand dunes in the mirage. It looks like water. It totally does. Like it's a full blown reflection and it looks like rippling flowing water. That's so crazy. It's insane. <laughs> It's not water, Shell. Water! <laughs> you can't make it there. All right, pit stop's over. We got water in the car, so we're covered. <laughs> we don't have to chase that down. Pretty wild. Mirage in the Sahara Desert. Pretty fit. Do you need to pee? Um. <laughs> we were welcomed back by, oh, look at the toilet paper, it has a face on it. I know. He's riding the elephant. Riding an elephant he and he's wearing hat. Shell's hat. <laughs> <laughs> we met our housekeeper last night, Rafai, and he was great. He stopped us last night and he asked us our names and where we were from and then he pointed at me and he goes, I'm gonna have a surprise for you tomorrow. And then when <laughs> we came back just now, they were standing waiting for us to open the door to see this. <laughs> it's pretty good, I like his trunk. I love it. A baby riding an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> It's too cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, we just set sail here on the Nile. Literally, <laughs> we are cruising the Nile for the next three days, and I am so excited about this. Daniel and I have been on a few cruises in our day. In the Caribbean, pretty much all of them, I think, have been in the Caribbean. Yeah. This, I think, is the most unique cruise we've ever been on, and it's freaking cool. We're just on a river, and it's just land surrounding us the whole time. Right now, we are making our way up to Colombo to go check out a few more sites. Setting sail is always definitely my favorite part of a cruise. I've been waiting for this boat to get off the dock and head up the Nile. And it is awesome, guys. It's kind of shocking. There's not that many people out on the top deck. I don't know how full the boat is. We'll find out at dinner tonight how full this boat really is. But not everyone is up on the top deck for whatever reason. I think it's insanity. But these are kind of different than maybe a cruise that you'd be used to back in the United States, Caribbean, elsewhere. This thing may make multiple ports per day. Like Shell said, right now we're going up to Komombo. We're going to hop off see the Komombo temple, but then we're back on for dinner while this thing heads up to another port up in Esna, and then it keeps moving on. So you aren't like traveling overnight or anything because the distances aren't that far. In that sense, it's kind of different than when you think of a traditional Caribbean cruise or something. But this is gorgeous, guys. The river is wide and beautiful. They have a nice, cool breeze. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah, there he is. Can I step on this? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think you're supposed to steer it with your feet. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's the horn. You are the captain yeah. of the Nile style. I'm the captain. Just call yeah. me Captain Shell. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's the horn button? This one. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Just entered the Kom Ombo Temple. 
and it is lit up at night. It is so cool seeing this, this temple is really lit cool up. seeing it at night. We've seen most of them during the day, but this one at night, and it is quite a different experience. It's awesome. So there's a few interesting things in this temple that aren't in other temples. One, they have a full wall filled with all the medical tools that they would use here at the temple. They have like scissors, saws, spoons, all sorts of stuff. He said that it's the first medical surgery tools ever recorded. There might have been surgeries before this, but these are the first ever recorded. Yeah, it's crazy. They're and it's all right there on here. the wall. And, and they, they look like the ones we still use today, kind of. I know. They <laughs> even have, them. I guess, prescriptions inscribed on the walls. They also have calendars, counting numbers, the dates, and everything is recorded on these walls, as well as a bunch of cool all the gods. People, gods, whatnot. Very awesome. This museum has over 20 mummified crocodiles in it. They're Nile crocodiles from 2,000 years ago, guys. They were all over this area back in that day, and they were revered and feared. Even half of the Komombo Temple was dedicated to a crocodile god. That's how powerful and revered these things were. But they're like so well preserved in these cases. <laughs> <laughs> found a spotlight here to get in front of. There's a lot of boats here. I want to show you when we go back, but when we got off our boat, we actually tied off on the end of, I think, seven other boats. I think we were the eighth boat lined up, so we were walking through the main lobby of a ton of boats. And there wasn't just one line of eight boats. There was at least four lines of eight boats. So eight times four, whatever that what number is. What is that, Daniel? Is. That's how many boats are chilling out there right now. And I think every guest on those boats up here at the Komombo Temple right now. 100%. But our guide has been whipping us in and out of all the highlights. He's sending us back places to go and see it and snap a photo without waiting behind a massive groups of tourists. You don't have to wait in lines if you book with our guy, guys. <laughs> and if you're a small group, you can really sneak around. These big groups really congest things, but <laughs> kind of crazy how many people are out here and how we've just been able to kind of get around and see the highlights real quick. This has been beautiful. This temple lit up at night, right? Right. Go there, right? Okay, so the boats weren't lined up when we got back. Ours had shifted all the way to the front, but I swear it was at the end when we got here. <laughs> Anyways, about to go down below decks for a little bit of dinner. It's dinner time. We got plenty of ice to go around. The food looks amazing. I have halal kebab meat, delicious looking basmati rice, some lamb, falafel, some chicken stuffed with rice. There's all sorts of fresh food too. I went for the cooked stuff first. Still got a plate of fresh stuff. I'll go for that later. <laughs> I also got this. It's supposed to be a really spicy pepper. I'm really excited about this. All right, guys, we just got done playing a rowdy game of dance off, something or other. <laughs> they would yell a random Daniel's number. <laughs> when the music would stop, you had to make a little group of that number. And I got out pretty quickly. I was not the first round. Shell held on for a couple more rounds, but she eventually got out. Five, cinco. Five, cinco. Oh. 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 And then eventually a nice Spanish woman won. Congrats Tons of fun. to her. She got a free drink. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Guys, today was a blast. Definitely stay tuned for tomorrow. More awesome stuff here in Egypt coming at you. And we'll see you then. Good night, everyone.